In today's video, we're going to look at the, the Seiko Prospects SRP series. This was just released a few years back and it's Seiko's uh, reference to their 1970s Prospect uh, dive watches, the 6309 series. So it really is a reissue. Of course, the Rage these days is the turtle case. As you can see, it kind of looks like a turtle. It first shows up on the Captain Willard uh, 6010, but it's there's really the 6309s in the uh, 70s have that turtle case. The turtle case definitely gives it a very distinctive look. There's no denying that. And from the side, it doesn't look that great, actually. The bezel on Seiko's usually is not a very high quality bezel if you look at my skx before this which was the predecessor to the srp that also had a very low quality bezel by comparison if you look at my captain willard the captain willard with its coin bezel has a very very high quality bezel it's amazing for a 1968 watch to have a bezel that's so nice the bezel edge and of course this doesn't have a click and it's a bi-directional bezel on the uh, SRP it is a unidirectional bezel and it has a certain level of tightness which you know is expected this watch really is very new I've only worn it a couple of times in terms of dimensions we are you know it's a it's about let's say this is I think it's about 14 millimeters thick yeah about 14 millimeters thick and the it's about 44 millimeters wide roughly yeah it's about 44 millimeters wide and the lug width is about 22 millimeters which is the strap and uh, lug to lug is about uh, 46 millimeter roughly I lost my light, I don't know why. Let's turn that back on. Now, the, you know, what is my view? It does have fairly, modern Seikos have all a fairly high level of uh, fit and finish. It naturally has that mis misaligned with the chapter ring. But that's just the hallmark of any Seiko. It does have the iconic Tsunami logo that pretty much every single Seiko with its that has anything with you know a hundred or two hundred meter water resistance would have that uh, Tsunami logo. Uh, in case somebody wanted to know why does it say air diver if you look at all these watches they'll say air diver now these actually are you know you can use them for professional drive diving the reason it says air diver is because you cannot use it for saturation diving I know a little bit about dive watches having done some diving so don't go doing saturation dive with an air dive watch so you know, actually, I don't know anybody who goes diving with this watch. Everybody wears a dive computer if you go diving. And it definitely has, you know, the one nice thing is it has drilled lugs, which does make it very easy to change straps. And the, you know, it does have, when you look at it, you know, I just don't like the side profile. But when you look at it from front, it has a nice vintage look to it with its uh, dark gray matte uh, dial finish because it's not black. Seiko's are never black. If you look at the old SKX that also has that nice uh, gray dial and you really to get the jet black dials you have to go to the 1960s Seiko's which were more black but really since the 1990s these have always been a dark gray color. The markers are slightly raised, which is always a very nice sign of quality on these Seikos. 
and the the loom has a nice pillow effect to it the way the loom is applied so if you can see it against the light it's not a flat loom which just does make it give an uh, element of sophistication and as i said the seiko logo is much larger than it used to be and it's printed in white now remember in the vintage seikos these would have been printed in silver they were never white so that's one of the change i don't know why they didn't do silver but you know again from even on the silver uh print logos they from a distance anyway looked white this has a 4R36 caliber movement and the, that is a reasonably good movement. It has hacking, it has a self-winding uh, capacity, has 24 jewels, has about a 40 hour power reserve. So it's, you know, it's a fairly, uh, it's a decent movement. It is definitely an improvement on the 7S26 of the uh, SKX007, but I personally like the 7S26 a lot. I think the 7S26 is a great movement. Now, the strap on this is truly a revelation. This is a nice soft silicone strap. And, you know, in my particular watch, which is the Japanese model, uh, and I, my, my, in this case, I actually do know the the Malaysian Chinese uh, watches also have a pretty high quality strap. The difference, obviously, is the movement on the Japanese built watch has a Japanese movement. So if you open this up, it would say Japan, but the Chinese movements will not say Japan. So there, so even though there are lots of people who believe that the Japanese watch and the Malaysian watch are the same, they're actually not. And a great way of knowing that they're different is by looking at what the market is willing to pay. The Japanese model uh, obviously goes for much uh, higher price than the uh, Chinese uh, built model. Now, the this particular model is the SRP777, which is just the most basic watch with the black dial, the white markers, the black bezel and the silicone uh, rubber strap. I would replace the bezel if I really wanted to like this. If I wore this watch a lot, I'd probably put a ceramic bezel out here just because this bezel is always very cheap. Seiko, for some reason, loves putting cheap bezels, even on the uh, uh, SKX007 or on my Captain Willard. Cheap bezels. It's just ridiculous how cheap these Seiko bezels are. But I'm happy to see that the rest of the dial has a pretty high level of quality and fit and finish. Um, is it a bargain? Yes, definitely. If you don't have a Seiko diver, this is definitely the watch to buy. There are people on eBay who will ask you $350, $400. But if you really look carefully, I have seen these go as low as $180, $200. So just keep your eye out with a coupon. You can easily get that for a couple of hundred dollars. And... You know, it definitely is a great watch, you know, this particular, and if you can get, the problem in the US is if you get them, you're not going to get the Made in Japan model. To get the Made in Japan model, you have to buy it from a Japanese seller or an international seller. But now these watches are so common that really every watch you're going to get is all likely going to be a genuine watch. There aren't really that many fake uh of fakes of these uh, the SRPs just because it's not worth it. Maybe in a couple of years you will start getting the fakes, but till then you know enjoy. What is I think you know definitely the next a uh, great entry level budget Seiko diver. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please be sure to hit like uh, and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me when I get subscribers. So just go ahead and click that button. It's like no effort for you, but helps me so much. And I will see you on another video. Uh, thanks again for watching. And let's, you know, let's let me know in the comments which uh, watch you would like me to uh, profile next.